So that to the Indian Sun, I'm so excited to speak with you. Your work is amazing. You have made a groundbreaking advancement that could soon allow GPs to screen for Alzheimer's disease with a simple finger prick blood test. Could you explain your innovative finger prick blood test for this disease and how it differs from current screening methods? Sure. First of all, good morning, Indira, and thank you for having me on your show. Um, so I'm uh, I'm a physicist by training. Um, I'm in, uh, I work at Monash Engineering, and what we have developed is we have developed an electronic sensor, a tiny sensor that can actually detect um, any analyte of interest at extremely small quantities. So we tried to work, uh, I mean, we tried to do lots of consultations with people to identify areas where we could do, uh, where we could generate most impact. And then um, we noticed that there was so much activity happening in the Alzheimer space, and there are no accessible tools available for early detection or early diagnosis. That's when we thought um, we might actually try and use our devices for uh, early detection or early diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And with Alzheimer's, what is happening is uh, we already have known biomarkers. Mm. Um, so biomarkers are molecules that are present in human body in some form uh, that indicate the presence of a particular condition or a particular disease. So we already have known biomarkers for Alzheimer's. Um, the current diagnostic methods cannot be used until symptoms are shown, which may be often too late. And then, interestingly, very recently, FDA had approved two drugs, which are known to slow down the disease progression, mm -hmm. which means that early detection or early diagnosis is very timely now, because if we catch the disease very early, there is a possibility that we could use these drugs to slow down the progression of the disease. And this will result in a much healthier, or th actually this could be a proper disease management tool. Yeah. Okay. So what inspired to, for you to develop this portable test? And how does your background in semiconductor and optoelectronic devices contribute to the big breakthrough? Very, very good question, actually. So. Um, when we started this re research, we did not set out to find a diagnostic tool for Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. We were interested in making extremely sensitive and accurate sensors. And the sensors that we have made, they are electronic sensors. They are electronic devices. So these are the devices I have worked all my career on. So we developed an electronic sensor, and it just so happens that it can be used to detect biomarkers. And when we realized the, um, when we realized that this could be so much useful in detecting diseases and it could change so many or it could affect so many lives, mm -hmm. we decided to test it out for this purpose. Okay. So can you so, yeah, can you describe the process and technology behind detecting ultra low concentrations of disease markers in blood? Sure. Um, so, like I said, these are electronic sensors. Um, the sensor is tiny, tiny. We cannot actually see it with our naked eye. Mm. So, here I have it in my hand. This is a prototype. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. the actual sensing bit is tiny, tiny. We can't see it. Mm. But then we need all of these accessories mm. to drive small amounts of current to the sensor. Mm. Now the sensor supports small amounts of currents, mm. but if something sticks to the surface of the sensor, mm. the currents flowing through it change. Mm. So what we do is what we modify the surface of the sensor so that nothing but what we want to detect can stick there. So mm. when we put a drop of blood, if there are biomarkers that we are interested in detecting are present in that drop, mm. they stick to the surface of the sensor, the currents change, and we get a signal out. But if these biomarkers are not present in the blood, then nothing happens to the sensor. No changes happen. 
the signal doesn't change, so nothing happens. So that's how we detect biomarkers. Okay. It's essentially surface science. Okay, yeah. So at what stage of the project are you in? When is it going to be you know, rolled out? Um, so we have tested our sensors for lots of different things. Um, and we have already... We have published some of the results, but some of the results are confidential still. Mm -hmm. So we have confidence in the performance of the sensor. But if we want to bring out something in the bio, bio side or biotech or medtech side, we need to go through cl clinical trials first. And then there are lots of approval processes. Mm -hmm. And then um, we need to manufacture these sensors as well uh, on a large scale to distribute them or to market them. So these are the next steps, clinical tests, validation and approvals and manufacturing. Okay. Uh, and how do you see this, you know, this changing the landscape of Alzheimer's uh, disease treatment? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be impactful because currently if, um, I mean, currently people uh, go for diagnostic tests only after symptoms show. Hmm. And these diagnostic tests are usually uh, brain scans and imaging. Hmm. So they involve exposure to radiation and these are not accessible. Not everybody can access these uh, imaging facilities. You hmm. need to have access to specialist facilities. Hmm. And then it costs you a couple of thousand dollars hmm. per each scan. Hmm. And then you have to wait for, I, I don't know the exact times, but maybe a few days to get your results out. Hmm. And there's another way to um, uh, get diagnosed with uh, for Alzheimer's, to get tests for Alzheimer's. That is, uh, they actually uh, puncture your spine and extract what is known as cerebrospinal fluid. Hmm. The process itself sounds very painful. I know, yeah, because I know any bone marrow biopsy is so painful. So, I, and I was thinking of spine, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. So they extract this uh, cerebrospinal fluid and they test for exactly these biomarkers that we are testing for. Uh, and the reason they need to use the CSF or the, this fluid is because uh, the concentration of biomarkers is slightly higher in cerebrospinal fluid than in blood. Mm. So if we can do all of this mm. without pain in a few minutes mm. and it costs you a couple of hundred dollars, then life becomes so much more easier, mm. right? People can go and get tested for it even before symptoms are shown. Then they can go to their GPs for advice, try to change their lifestyle. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, the impact is going to be huge, massive. Yeah. And so how long was this project in, in, in the making and what were some of the challenges that you faced? Um, challenge is always funding. You know, we always want to do lots and lots of things, but then we don't have sufficient resources. So funding is always a challenge. Even now we are looking for funding. So um, we are talking to people if they can help us in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have been working on these sensors for four to five years now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we started talking about Alzheimer's maybe in the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. What about industry funding? Um, we are looking for investors. Hmm. We are looking for investors, but uh, our funding uh, mostly is from the Australian government. But we are seeking funding from private sector as well. Yeah, hmm. I, I don't want to talk too much about that. I don't want to give away names, but we are looking for both government and private sectors for funding. Hmm. Yeah, but it's it's interesting because you would think that something like Alzheimer's or dementia is something that people would you know be very willing to invest and be you know willing to put their hands up for it. But uh, it's surprising, and uh, you know with dementia diagnosis expected to double by twenty fifty four, and uh, how critical do you think this technology will be in addressing the growing challenge of Alzheimer's disease? Um, so we have to distinguish between the two. So yes. the biomarkers and that if we you are could talking. Also, explain a bit more about dementia and Alzheimer's. That would be really great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, the biomarkers that we are targeting or we are talking about now are for Alzheimer's. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, dementia. Dementia is when 
you start forgetting things, right? Is that and dementia. Layman, sorry, I'm just cutting you. But for a layman like us, is dementia the onset of Alzheimer's disease, or they are totally, no, no. So, two, totally no, 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 no. separate? They, they are two different things. Dementia okay. can be caused. Uh, there can be a lot of things that could cause dementia, mm. but Alzheimer's disease mm. is the main cause for dementia. So 60% of the dementia cases are because of Alzheimer's. So if you have Alzheimer's, you will develop dementia. But dementia can be caused by other factors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, please carry on with the, the previous answer. I cut you there. Sorry, what was the question? I think it was about, uh, you know, with dementia, diagnosis expected to double in so-and-so years. How critical you think this technology will be in addressing the growing challenge of uh, I think we have talked about this before, right? So we are targeting Alzheimer's disease, which mm. is the predominant or the major cause for dementia. Mm. And we all know that the worldwide population is aging. Mm. Number of dementia or number of Alzheimer's cases are increasing worldwide, including mm. in Australia. So it's going to be a huge burden on the healthcare sector for any government. So if we are able to diagnose Alzheimer's very early on and manage the condition properly, then maybe we will reduce the number of severe dementia or Alzheimer's cases, mm -hmm. and that may reduce the impact on the um, healthcare budget or healthcare sector. Okay. And how does this new test fit into the broader context of your research interest in semiconductor, nanophotonics, and nanostructured solar cells? Um, so the materials that uh, uh, we, the material that we are using for sensing these biomarkers is nanomaterial. Mm. Um, so that's how this fits into my research. Mm -hmm. But you know, research is about finding new things. So it, it's possible that you don't always stick to one particular thing. You want to diversify as well. You want to see where are the interesting, uh, where are the gaps uh, and which gaps are interesting for you to address? So I don't think this is what I have done in the past, mm -hmm. but this is certainly linked to what I have done in the past and I'm just exploring new areas. Okay. And what are your hopes for the future impact of this technology, uh, the portable test on global health, particularly in this fight against uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease and, and so, yeah, so this is something we have to be very cautious about how we are going to use it. So mm -hmm. I personally feel that um, using these devices for a nationwide screening program would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, we ask people to come to a GP. Mm -hmm. Everybody who is aged between 50 and 54, let's mm -hmm. say we ask them to go to a GP and take this simple blood test. And then we can see um, um, who has a higher risk of getting dementia mm -hmm. and then possibly give them advice on changing their lifestyle or managing their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But then um, some people do not advocate this approach because they think mm -hmm. I mean, as long as we do it under expertise supervision, I think there is no danger. But if we just roll out these devices in the market and say everybody is free to buy them and use use them at home, mm -hmm. then I think it's going to cause a lot of panic. Because let's say I buy this device off the shelf from a pharmacy, I do a blood test at home, and then I know that this is the concentration of biomarkers or these are my chances of developing Alzheimer's later on. But I don't know what to do with that data. Mm. I don't know how to manage the situation. It might just create panic. It might just create worry amongst the population. But then if I'm doing this test at my GP, then they, they can give me advice on what to do, what not to do, how to manage the situation. So I think population screening under careful supervision is a good way to roll out these devices. And so, but obviously it's not going to be a device that is, you know, uh, freely available in the chemist, like, you know, your blood pressure tool. Uh, I'm sure this will be, this will come with a rider in terms of its uh, uh, production and supply. It'll be only be to GPs, isn't it? 
that's what we want to do that's what we are advocating but in principle actually you can buy it from the chemist you could possibly buy it from the chemist it also depends on the approvals that we get mm. the good thing with these devices is that you do not need any specialist expertise to operate it okay right so mm. i can operate it i can read out the test results i don't need any um, any knowledge of alzheimers i don't need any knowledge of electronic device nothing at all all i need to do is put a drop of blood and then wait for it to show me the result it i mean we can digitize the signal mm. we can let people know whether you are in the low risk category or the high risk category or the medium risk category so it's very easy to use so in principle yes you could buy it off and use it yourself mm. but we strongly strongly advocate against that thank you instead na so give me a time frame as to when the device will be available in the market um, so it's very difficult to put a timeline uh, to the next steps mm-hmm. um a few years i would say but then it also depends on how much funding we are getting so if we get lots and lots of funding then maybe we can bring it to the market um, sooner yeah maybe in I don't know I don't want to put a yeah <laughs> yes and this must be the first breakthrough model in the world that you have developed isn't it uh yes actually yes so to the best of our I mean nobody gives out their technology so we nobody says what technology they are using for detecting disease markers but to the best of our knowledge I think this is the first um, electronic sensor okay That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all that information and knowledge. Uh it was a pleasure talking to you Dr. Sudha. Thank you Indira. Thanks for having me on your show. It was I quite enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.